Okay, what I would like to talk today is uh, about the audio workflows and signal flows that uh, a typical uh, uh, large broadcasting uh, uh, company has to face in order to cope with all the requirements uh, in regard to audio and loudness. As you know, big companies, big broadcasters need to deal with lots lots of contents and of uh, uh, different channels. So, what are the goals that, as a broadcaster, we would have to face? First of all, we know we have to maintain programs loudness level consistent, regardless the genre and the length and the style of the content. So we want old content being broadcast at the same loudness level, although we heard some different uh, uh, opinions these days, but that's, that's fair enough. Maybe this is not necessarily uh, the, the vision that everybody has to uh, to share, but um, I understand this, and as, as uh, Florian especially said already, uh, having one target for all content is a much more easy uh, w way to, uh, to approach the loudness uh, issue. And then we want to maintain all the t different TV channels at consistent levels. This is one of the most uh, uh, important things to, to, to reach. So th th is the, the most annoying fact of uh, as, as uh, be beside the fact of having uh, uh, commercial sounding too loud, is the fact that when we switch between one channel to another, the, the listener has to uh, immediately approach the volume control. And then this must work for all audio formats, and that includes 5.1 stereo or even for the mono reproduction. And this has as well to work through TV set or home theater systems. I see. I think that Mark Pasco from Dolby will mention this, so I will not go into details. And as we have been heard as well, we need to make the loudness range of the content compliant and uh, uh, well translated through the TV listening environment. And this does not have to affect anyhow the audio quality of the program. And as well, from the creative point of view, we have to, fa to find solutions that would not uh, modify anyhow the uh, relation and, and the, the creative intention, so the, the way that the producer of the content wanted that program to sound like. And this will definitely lead to a much more improved listening experience and the most possible uh, sounding uh, program through this kind of environment, so we are not a necessarily aiming to sound as good as high quality uh, music programs or other content, but w definitely within the, the broadcasting chain, we have to provide the best possible listening experience. And as well, as we all have to deal with money, and money is extremely important these days, we have to please the advertisers, so we have to not put ourselves in the position where they would complain with us. And last but not least, we have to comply with the regulations. We, this is a very much growing I, um, <coughs> item and uh, issue that uh, day by day is uh, more and more important for more and more countries. Italy has been into this for already four years, uh, as well as other countries like uh, UK or Poland or Spain uh, and the US uh, recently, as uh, uh, Mauro will, will describe in a in uh, one hour, and so this will possibly uh, involve more territories and is uh, erasing a, must, a more important issue day by day. So, so far we approached and list, listed the goals, but this is a very, very challenging uh, issue. Let's see how we have to face it and what the challenge is. We have a various uh, type of content that includes TV production, so programs that have been uh, uh, produced specifically for the TV uh, delivery. And as well, we have cinema production, so programs and content that have been produced and um, crafted within a completely different environment, so the cinema theater. And then we have live feeds. So if for TV and cinema we had pre-recorded material, now we have also to take into account what happens in the live feed. So pre-record the programs, and they could be either by tape, 
or by file, more and more. <coughs> and then we have very long form content as well. We have short programs. And at the end of the chain, we also have very extremely short content like promos, ident, and commercials. And then we have new productions, so programs that have not been done with the previous specifications, but that we have the possibility to produce, uh, design, and craft according to the new loudness standards. But as well, we have archive material. So we have plenty of hours of uh, uh, programs that have been produced during the last 60 years, maybe. And we have as well to make them comply with the new regulations. And we have channels that we are not in under, they are not at all under control because they are just arriving as they are produced and we are just rebroadcasting them. But as well, in order to provide a good, pleasant listening experience to the audience, we have to take care of them too. And these programs can be of different format. So they could be either multi-channel, stereo, and they have to be audible through as well simulcasting chain. Not only, we can eventually have more than one language. So very constantly we broadcast in two languages in Italy. Switzerland has up to four languages <coughs> and as well services for visual impaired or voiceover features. But finally, we do have the tools. Tools that are specifically aimed and designed to cope with us for the loudness issue. These tools could be split into two main categories that I would mention the meters, and we have different flavors of meters. So we have the hard hardware real-time loudness meters, as well as we have software real-time loudness meters. And we have plugin for real-time loudness meters, and we have software on the file-based domain. And the second main category is the one for the processors. This would be the hardware real-time processors or the software real-time loudness processors. And as well, we have servers processors and finally also software loudness server processors. So we have all the tools we can imagine and we can use in order to uh, reach our goals. And finally, we have the recommendations. So there are no excuses for not applying the loudness uh, standard. We can, any of us can uh, choose the, and pick up the one that better suits for his specific needs. I want to talk a bit in more in depth about the broadcast workflow. Let's imagine that we have two main areas. We have the sources that I mentioned before, and we have the destinations. Traditionally, the only destination uh, format was the MPEG stereo transmission. And uh, the way we have been using tools in order to uh, create a much more controlled, let's say, audio leveling, where was the real-time processor. But we know now, and I think nobody can object that, that an aggressive use of real-time processor would generate a degradation in the audio quality. So this is already uh, contradicting our goals, one of our goals. Then things have been developing, and we moved from stereo towards a multi-channel transmission. You see those lines are not in one line, and you will realize immediately why. And as well for the 5.1 transmission, we can or we could use a real-time processor for the same need. But this is, as, as I say, and uh, I'm just saying my own personal opinion. I mean, I, I understand that there might be other way of approaching this issue, and uh, they might not necessarily be <coughs> less efficient than mine. Uh, but my way and my approach is that we should use the least as possible the real-time processor on transmission. But as well, as I said before, we have to provide 
for people that are not listening through 5.1 home theater system, the stereo transmission, and for that we use the down mixer. But again, also because the loudness algorithm is slightly different in weighting compared to the normal uh, uh, way of down mixing and the, and the best practice of down mixing for the sound engineers, we might have a slight difference in between the 5.1 normalized programs and the one that is, as a consequence, down mixed through the stereo chain. So again, we would need a real-time processor. But in this case, as far as the original native 5.1 content was uh, already normalized to target, this real-time processor on the down mix chain could have a much softer uh, compression ratio. And then the third area I would like to talk about is the one in between the two that I called ev evaluation <laughs> and normalization. So this is meant to normalize and assess the loudness level of the content prior to transmission. The main area in this category is the QC, so the quality control. The quality control, quality control department takes care of assessing the loudness and bes beside that all other technical uh, parameters, so video and uh, metadata and other factors. And uh, it makes sure that all the contents that are provided before them being ingested for transmission are complying with all the technical standards. So, amongst the ones that we see listed in the source area, which one do you think that could be used and could apply to the quality control area? Can we use the live feeds for the quality control? Can we feed the live feeds to the quality control? No. Any suggestion? No, which sources would we feed to the quality control? Okay, I'll give you a bit hint. The productions that have not produced according to the, in this case, the R128, definitely need to be assessed in a quality control area. At the same time, also other pre-recorded productions have the same need to be processed, or no, sorry, not processed, but measured and controlled in the quality control. So in this area, we definitely need a meter, a loudness meter. And the only operation that a quality, a quality control um, engineer could do is either take <coughs> the program and pr pass it on to the ingesting or reject it and request a new master. Then going on, we have the cinema productions. So content that has been produced within a different environment, with different uh, setting, uh, and with, dif with, with a different target for, for a different destination. And I think that we cannot just take as, unfortunately, many times it, it is done, that content and just put into the ingestion phase. We have to, to uh, modify and to repurpose that content in order to have it translating well in the TV domain. And for that, there is an area called repurposing. And as well, what do we need in the repurposing area? In this case, we need the meter and the processor, because the meter is needed to assess and evaluate the loudness and the audio levels, and the processor, of course, to accommodate and modify them in order to make that content applying to the uh, complying with the new uh, standard for TV. So once all these pre-recorded material are ready, they can go into the ingesting. And talking about live, live feed, we can think of a similar area that create a um, <coughs> more compliant version for the TV listening. Especially because if you think at sport events, can you imagine how messy and confusing is uh, a gallery, an audio gallery in an Obi-Wan, where all the communications go and uh, the poor sound engineer that I don't envy, envy at all has to provide the best audio possible 
with the, all the, the director calling or phone calls arriving or other, other operators uh, moving around the same small booth and with probably a not optimized uh, uh, sound uh, playback system. So a solution for that is to have an area that could provide a, in a much more controlled environment proper uh, mixing and uh, um, translation for the 5.1 content as well for the stereo content to the transmission. In case this is not possible, again, we can use real-time processors that would do main, more or less the same job, but with being non, being non controlled by any human, they would be, of course, maybe less effective, but still could do the job. And in that area, we, of course, would still rely on meter and processors for the same reasons. But the best solution is to move as back as possible, the control of loudness and of mixes back where the original content is created. And this would be for new productions, according to the R128, and as well for live feeds. So where, wherever it is possible, of course, if we can design the proper infrastructure that would work and would, would have people trained according to these standards, in my opinion, this is always the best solution. And then we have this huge amount of material which has been already produced and ingested and uh, definitely mastered years and years ago when all this uh, matter was treated differently. In that case, we can only m uh, measure and process those material, improve as much as possible. Unfortunately, the timing in, in the broadcast uh, industry is, does not allow does not allow to uh, to take every content and to uh, master as in a different industry like the music industry it would be possible so the best and the most automated processing is in that area the, the best it is and finally we have passed through through, through channels that as I said before, we have no control at all on those channels, so we can only rely on real-time processors according to the, to the best setting, so according also to the nature of the channel and of the content that is played through that stream. So we have to fine-tune the processor in order to, to provide the best audio quality possible and to match with the overall uh, and the target loudness level. So if we recap what I said, let's, let's we have a look if we were able to uh, reach our goals. We needed and uh, wanted to maintain program loudness level consistent. I think that by applying all those uh, tools, we could do it. To maintain channels loudness level consistent as well. We wanted to provide consistent levels amongst different audio formats. And as I said, whenever we can do it by offline processing or uh, operate, operating with uh, professional uh, engineers, that, that's always, in my opinion, the best solution. Then we want to provide comfortable loudness range. We learned how using the, that parameter in the R128 we can develop good skill. We want to not affect the original creative intent. I think that, as I said, if we limit the use of the uh, real-time processor in transmission, we have a much more uh, controlled operation while we approach and we uh, modify the original dynamics of the program. So we should be able to prevent the abuse of compression and to just apply as much as we need. And possibly in this way we were able to provide the best listening experience to the listeners, especially if we compare to what the current situation is in many, many broadcasters. And last but not least, we have to, and we possibly are able to comply with the regulations, because as we have been 
checking every single item before and prior to the transmission, this is definitely the only way and the best way to make sure that we are not breaking the law. Possibly, we are also pleasing the advertisers because we are definitely increasing the audio quality of their content. And by providing a consistent level between program and commercials, I think we are definitely averaging the experience of the customers. So the, even the uh, interstitial breaks would be perceived as part of the entertainment. Mm. So rather than having them kicking the viewer out and having them jumped on the sofa, we just not even uh, advise them that there is an advert. And if this is, has the same quality as typical other content have, it could be an enormous improvement for them and as a, uh, a consequence also for the entire advertising industry. <laughs> so, let's lead to some conclusions. Again, other people might have different opinions, but uh, this is simply what I have been experiencing during the, the years. I think that we should rely on real-time processing as little as possible. In some cases, they are very, very useful, and not because TC Electronic is here, but I think you would agree with me that they not only should be uh, uh, considered a great organizer of this such an informative event, but most of all, they are just the, among the, the, bo the best uh, uh, pro products designer in audio. And then it's important, in my opinion, to not give for guarantee that content coming from other platforms or other destination distribution would be just simply uh, good as well in, on TV. Process. Everything is not being produced according to the loudness standards and use the proper tools. But the better is, of course, by using those tools as soon as possible in the production chain. So I have experienced an enormous increase in the audio quality and sound quality by relying on loudness metering and normalization. Of course, it's not given for free, so it definitely implies a little investment, which is definitely worth, and needs some training. And that's, I guess, one of the reasons why are, we are here today. But the result is definitely uh, worth. So I think that it's, it's, it's very, it's absolutely great to, to that this has become a reality, this has come through, because we are all benefiting from this, as engineers, as producers, and as well as users. And that's all. So I'm, I'm available for questions. <laughs> <laughs>